I'm so nervous. <laughs> Hi everyone. So I had this idea that I was going to try every single Trader Joe's coffee product that I could find. And initially I thought this would be seven products. So imagine my surprise when I go to Trader Joe's and I find that they have a massive shelf full of a variety of coffee things. So I picked out as much as I could and we're just gonna, we're just gonna make our way through these today. And there's a huge variety of stuff. So there's a several bags of pre-ground coffee. There are several canisters of whole bean coffee. There are creamers. We have instant coffee. We have cold brew. We have cold brew concentrate, bottled cold brew. And we also have chocolate candy, which I got as a palate cleanser slash sustenance because I'm anticipating this is going to take a long time. I've already had one cup of coffee and it is 1.15 PM. So let's get started. Now I've decided that I'm gonna split these up into several categories because there's a huge variety of things and we're gonna need to break these down if I have any hope in getting through them. Okay, so the first category of things I bought is whole bean coffee. Now, surprisingly, they had a lot less of this than I was expecting, so let's run through what I purchased. The first thing I have is this Colombian Supreme Coffee. You can see it right there. This is a medium roast. It is by far the largest canister that I purchased, and I, I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do with it after this video, so there is this. Next off, we have a Sumatran Coffee, which is kind of interesting. This is a flavor profile that is kind of hit or miss for a lot of people. It's often described as being super earthy, which is isn't everyone's cup of tea. I've had Sumatran coffees that I really like and I've had ones that I don't like as much. So very curious about this. This is a medium to dark roast, which is gonna be interesting because if we're layering a dark roast on top of an already kind of earthy Sumatran coffee, we'll just, I'm not making any judgments. I'm just saying we will find out what that tastes like. The next thing we have is a decaf coffee. This is again, whole bean in a canister. It's a medium roast and I don't have any information about the origin. So I'm assuming this is a blend of something. Just confirming that there's no origin information. Nope, this is a decaf, so that'll be fun. Next off, we have what they're calling their French roast, which is generally heralded as like a super, super, super dark roast. I'm not the biggest fan of super dark roast, so this will be interesting. I don't drink them a lot. This claims to be low acidity, so put that to the test. And then the last thing I have, which I'm actually the most excited about, is what they're calling their barista espresso coffee blend. Now this is a bag, which is different. All the rest of these whole beans are canisters. Um, I like the packaging for the most part. It looks like something you would generally find in you know, like a specialty store. There we go. Something to point out is that this is a blend of both Arabica and Robusta beans. I don't have any information on the origins of those beans besides that they're Arabica and Robusta, so who knows. When you look at the back, it does have several different instructions, either for drip coffee or for espresso. So I guess you can use this either way. We'll see if I actually break out the espresso machine. Anyways, I'm very excited for this coffee either way. Next category. I'm gonna try to get through these as quickly as possible. These are our pre-ground coffees. We again, we have a French roast. This is gonna be super dark and I am very, very curious about how it tastes because I'm not a huge fan of what people know as French roasts. We have a dark coffee, which is, I suppose, different from a French roast. I'm guessing it's kind of one notch down. You go light, medium, dark French roast. So there's this. We have a medium roast coffee, which I'm assuming is basically the same as this, but they're medium roast. We have a light roast coffee. Again, I, from my understanding, these are all kind of a series. So you have your light, your medium, and then your dark roast. So next we have French vanilla flavored coffee. So this had vanilla, what does it say? French vanilla flavor oils added to the grounds when they ground this coffee. So this will be very interesting. I love vanilla creamer in my coffee. So if this is anything kind of similar to that, I think it should be pretty good. And last but not least, we have this Illy coffee. This is pre-ground and it is ground for espresso. So I'm gonna fire up that bad boy back there. We're gonna put this in, we're gonna see how it pulls. Uh, it says it's an extra, extra bold roast. So again, a dark roast. Trader Joe's has a lot of dark roasts. They're terrifying and we'll see how it goes. Okay, let me go get the next thing. So next up, I got us uh, some creamers because I'm anticipating with the amount of coffee I'm gonna be having, and maybe some of them I'm not gonna like as much. I'm gonna add creamer and see how their creamers do. The ones I was able to find at the Trader Joe's I went to was their coffee creamer that is hazelnut flavored. I'm not a huge hazelnut person, but see how it goes. Next up, we have their vanilla coffee creamer. I'm very excited about this one. I've actually had this one in the past. I love vanilla creamers. I think they're delicious. And this is gonna be my fallback if I really don't like something. 
And lastly, we have an alternative milk creamer. This is a blend of coconut and almond creamers, and it is also vanilla flavored. Okay, we have one more category to get through. I lied, we have two. So first off, we have this instant Colombian coffee. I'm very excited to see how this tastes because I've had some instant coffees that are absolutely delicious. And I've had someone that just completely missed the mark, completely disgusting, so we'll see. Next off, and you've probably seen this floating around because this is a very, very popular purchase at Trader Joe's. This is their instant cold brew. And then this honestly is the thing that excited me most out of all the purchases I've made. I saw this and I was like, I want this to be good because I would use this if it was good. And it's their instant coffee packets that already have creamer and sugar added to them. And I just, I want this to be good. Like the packaging is really, really cute. I'm excited to crack it open. I haven't seen what these packets actually look like, but I don't know. I'm a huge fan of just like all in one things that encompass every purpose it needs. So. I hope this is good. This should be an amazing like camping coffee. We'll see. Okay, one last category. The very last thing I got was all of our ready-made or almost ready to make drinks. So along the back, we have their cold brew coffee. This is completely ready to go. Just pour it in a cup and drink it. We also have their cold brew concentrate. So slightly different. We're gonna be diluting this with water and then consuming it. And then I also have a few of their prepackaged drinks that you can just grab and go. These are single serving drinks. Number one, we have their cold brew. And from what I can tell from the label, this is also a nitro cold brew, which we'll see how well that turns out. I've never been a huge fan of nitro cold brew, so maybe it'll change my mind, maybe it won't. Next up, we have a coconut cream latte. This is a dairy-free drink that is also vegan. I hope it's good. I'm not a huge fan of coconut flavor or coconut milk in general, but I really, really liked canned lattes. For some reason, there's something just very cute and adorable about them, so. Hopefully that's good. We have their regular single serving cold brew canned coffee. And then we also have a French vanilla canned cold brew coffee. I have high hopes for this one. Again, I love vanilla. I love vanilla creamer. I love vanilla flavor and coffee. So fingers crossed these are good. Okay, so how this is gonna go. So I had to think about this because I wasn't totally sure how we would actually test all of these coffees because it would be very, very, very labor intensive and time consuming to brew them all as a drip coffee. So what I think I'm gonna do is for those whole bean coffees, I'm gonna actually set up a cupping. For those pre-ground coffees, I'm kind of stuck because they are all ground for essentially drip slash kind of in between drip and French press. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out my Bonavita brewer, I'm gonna break out my French press and whatever brewing tools I have right now. And we're just gonna make as many of them as possible, as quickly as possible. I'll put them to the side and then we'll all taste them one by one. That's gonna be the most time intensive part of this process, but it kind of is what it is because they're pre-ground and I can't do a cupping with that. Then for the instant coffees, those are gonna be super easy and fun. Very excited about that. And of course the pre-made like ready to drink coffees, that'll be super easy. So let's get started because it is now 1.35 and I'm very nervous. This is potentially, um, oh my gosh, they look fake. This is like, I don't wanna put this in my grinder. Hey, this is the Sumatran coffee, the medium dark. These are the freaking just like, these are the, the, the greasiest boys I've ever seen. This is some oily boys, okay. Everything is ground. I'm gonna remove these because I have them all marked, but in case anyone's curious, we have decaf, we have the Sumatra, we have French, we have Colombian, and then we have the espresso blend. So I'm gonna remove all of these. I know on the back end what these are, so don't worry, we're not gonna get them mixed up. I'm not gonna go over too much the details of cupping, but if you are interested, both James Hoffman and Casey Mix Coffee have done great informational slash instructionals about how to cup, so check them out if you would like more information. We're not gonna do that today, but maybe someday. Although I feel like there are a lot of people who are more qualified than me who have talked about it, so I would always defer to them. Our coffees have now had their time steeping. I'm now going to break the crust and take in any aromatics that are released for them as we do that. So I'm gonna start on this end with the decaf and then work my way over to the espresso blend. I am pleasantly surprised by this decaf. This one is starting to kind of develop a little bit of an ashy flavor, flavor, smell. Um, so super excited for that. This one too, uh, there's a little bit of like something almost savory in it. 
I'm not getting a lot of sweetness out of any of these initially. Um, this one is very interesting. It's kind of a peppery, like almost kind of like a spicy, spiciness to it. Not bad though, very interesting. I'm curious how it's gonna be uh, in tasting. Not much from that one. It smells very, very dark. Not a lot of discernible smells to it. Decaf first. It's nice. It's pretty well balanced. Like it's really, really sweet on the front end. Um, again, there's very, very little acidity. So the finish is just kind of smooth and like rolls off your tongue. Um, not very complex, but it just kind of tastes like a very medium, almost a lighter, almost like to the lighter end of a coffee roast. Um, that's good. I like that. Did not expect that. Sumatra. I'm not tasting that again. That's all I'm gonna say. French roast. Can I just dump it out now? <laughs> uh, very, very ashy. Um, it tastes like burnt sea wood or something. Um, I don't like that. I'm very sorry. I gave it a try. I was hoping that it would be good. I don't like that. Okay, the Colombian is nice. The Colombian is a slightly higher acidity. Um, it's got a little bit of like citrusiness on the finish. Um, that acidity definitely comes at the end. Um, pretty mellow, a little bit on the sweeter side on the front end. Um, yeah, it's good. I would kind of describe it as like a lemony citrus at the end if you're curious. Um, I don't mind that. Yeah, I would drink that. Like if you gave that to me, I would not think it was from Trader Joe's. And then finally, we have our espresso blend. Okay, that one definitely tastes like dark chocolate. And with that dark chocolate comes a little bit of bitterness, which isn't a bad thing. Frequently, I think that people interpret bitterness as being like a bad flavor, but it's not. It's just kind of a balancing aspect of a lot of the sweetness that you get in coffee. So that's very, very dark chocolate, very, very one note, like kind of like a 70% cacao bar or something like that. Um, not bad. If I had to rank these, and I am going to rank these, I would say the decaf is my favorite, followed by the Colombian coffee, followed by the espresso blend. These two, I'm gonna throw out. <laughs> okay, to summarize the ones that I would purchase again, we have the decaf, that is a medium roast. We have a medium roast Colombian coffee, and then we also have the barista espresso blend, Origins unknown, but it is a light to medium roast. Now, if that seems like a trend, I drink mostly light to medium, so that is my preference. But again, I really just did not like the Sumatran coffee and I didn't like the French roast either. So we're gonna go with these three. And again, they're gonna go in our would buy again pile, which we will review at the end of the video. Okay, next up, we have all of our pre-ground coffees. Again, I don't have a plan here. We're just gonna wing it. We're gonna make it work. I'm gonna get out as many brewers as I can and we're gonna get as many coffee started as I can. Hopefully this will take me less than 20 minutes, but we will see. So we have six different coffees here. We have ones that are definitely in the same series. We have this uh, dark, medium, and light roast here. We have our French vanilla coffee. We have a <laughs> another French roast. And then we also have the extra bold roast, which is like the darkest you can get. So I've got my favorite Bonavita brewer here. We're gonna brew one of these coffees into this. I've also got my French press. We're gonna use this. I'm just gonna keep rotating them and we have six coffees. It's gonna be three rounds of brewing. It's gonna work. Do I guess I, I, guess I should like plan this out. I'm gonna do all three of this series, which is the light, medium, and dark roast that's in like the same packaging. I'm gonna do all of these in the Bonavita and then I'm gonna do the French roast the French vanilla, and then this extra dark roast in the French press. So at least that way we'll have some consistency across these. And then we'll have, these are kind of like oddballs. They don't seem to be related to one another. So we'll just do those in the French press with the same recipe. Oh, I should get cups. I think when 
I'm gonna do is just set these all to the side uh, and I think I'm gonna taste them all when I'm done with everything. I know some of these will lose a little bit of their heat, um, but they're very, very hot to begin with, so it shouldn't make a huge difference. Next round. Okay, last two, we have our dark roast, which is going in the Bonavita, and then I'm gonna go work on getting our espresso ready. Now, I do wanna emphasize while I do this that I do believe that pre-ground coffee has its place. Um, I even had a sponsor last week that uses pre-ground coffee, and a lot of people kinda questioned that. Now, if you are looking to have full control over your coffee's profile, over the flavor, and you're looking kind of for like, I don't wanna say highest quality cup, but something that you can really control and make your own, absolutely buy whole bean. It'll last longer in general, the flavor is gonna be a lot better, and you get a lot more like variety with it. But that being said, I do believe ground coffee wins in terms of convenience. Uh, super easy to do, really, really great for a lot of lifestyles, so I will never be, shaming ground coffee, but uh, some of these are a little interesting. Okay, let's figure out this espresso thing now. Actually, I'm really confused. Okay. It doesn't say espresso. Why did I think that? This is ground incredibly fine. So that is, you know, somewhat comparable to what I'd want uh, from an espresso grind, but just make a mess everywhere. But if you look at the back, it says the preparation is supposed to be for brewed coffee. My fingers are nasty. It's supposed to be for brewed coffee or French press. And I'm not putting this in my French press. Like I, ge I genuinely don't know what to do with this. Like maybe mocha pot? Potentially? It says use one heaping tablespoon of coffee, approximately seven grams but it doesn't say how much water they're recommending is used. Oh no. I spilled coffee in my coffee. It's fine. It looks like we missed all the important bits. Okay, I'm deferring to Google on this one. Okay, I'm looking at reviews because I haven't been able to find any direct information. Some people are saying they're using this in their Breville espresso machine. I have someone here saying they're using this in their mocha pot. <sighs> well, you know, maybe this is a mistake. Maybe someone's gonna yell at me, that's okay. I am gonna try this out as espresso because to me, that's what I think when I see this grind size. We're just gonna go for it, it might be terrible, and if it is, oops. All right, this shot pulled in about 25 seconds. There is a visible crema on it, so fingers crossed we did okay. Okay, a solid 15 and a half minutes later, we have brewed everything. I think we're ready to go. Six different coffees, let's just start. I'm gonna go on this spectrum first, which is gonna be the light to dark roast that we have. This is that series of coffee that's all packaged the same way. The light roast is, mm, it's okay. It's fine. There's not a lot of flavor to it. It's not very punchy. It kind of sits on your tongue and then leaves. I like the medium. Um, higher acidity, kind of has a little bit of a long acidic aftertaste, um, but not in a bad way. It's just like, it's kind of sweet on the front, a little bit more acidic on the end. Um, very, very chocolatey, milk chocolate, That's nice, that's pleasant. And then the dark roast. Ooh. Well, I will say out of all the dark roasts we've had today, this is my favorite. Um, there's not a lot of dimensionality to it. Very, very one note. I do wanna add creamer to this because I think this is gonna be the perfect coffee to add creamer to. So we'll get to that in a second. Now moving up to the front, we have the French roast, which I am so excited to try. Just, it's that like burnt toast ashiness that's just like, it might be some people's favorite, but for me, this just doesn't work. Then we have the vanilla, which I am so tickled about. Interesting. Okay, so the aroma of this is very, very, very sickly sweet. Like it almost borderlines on like, 
don't know, it almost borderlines on an artificial like vanilla chapstick, if you know that flavor, where it just like, it's so strongly scented. Flavor wise, it there's a very, very light hint of vanilla, but it's nowhere near as strong as the aromatics made me believe it would be. It's interesting. It definitely tastes like an artificial vanilla. It does not taste um, like a natural vanilla bean would taste. I'm gonna add creamer to that too. That could be interesting. And then we have our espresso, which is the ultra, what are they calling this? Oh, extra bold roast. Well, <laughs> I read on the website when I was looking for instructions that they described it as being like toasted bread. I would describe it as bread that is now a cinder. This is not my favorite, but again, I have no idea how this was actually supposed to be prepared. It seems like people were just preparing it however they wanted to. It's pre-ground, it is very, very fine. It says on the back that it can be put in a French press. I'm not even gonna try it because I don't believe that's gonna work. Maybe that's my fault and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I don't love this, I don't love this, and I kinda like these. So that means we are left with this vanilla coffee, we're left with the medium, and then we also have the dark roast. Now I am going to add creamer to each one of these and we're gonna see how that goes. We're just gonna double down. I'm gonna put the vanilla creamer and the vanilla coffee. I'm gonna put, hmm, I'm gonna put this hazelnut creamer in the dark coffee, that seems to be right. And then I'm gonna put this coconut almond vanilla creamer in the medium roast. So we're gonna add one tablespoon of creamer to each coffee. Okay, vanilla on vanilla. That's lovely. That's so delicious. <laughs> this makes me so happy. It's vanilla creamer and a coffee that's lightly flavored like vanilla, choice. Now we have coconut, almond, coconut, almond, vanilla creamer. And that is in this medium roast coffee. Hmm. I don't really get a lot of coconut flavor. Um, I can definitely taste some of that almond in there. Um, not bad. Uh, one thing I don't always like about um, non-dairy creamers is that they don't add the same kind of texture to a coffee that a regular dairy creamer would. Um, so this is nowhere near as thick and creamy as this whole fat, you know, vanilla creamer is. But flavor wise, I don't mind it at all. And then this dark roast, we have the hazelnut. I'm still not a fan of hazelnut creamers, but this coffee does taste very, very, very nice um, with a little bit more fat added to it. It really mellows out some of those stronger, more bitter flavors. So things I would buy again. I would absolutely buy this vanilla coffee creamer again. It's delicious, it's a vanilla creamer. You probably know what it tastes like and this is exactly it. I would also buy this vanilla coffee again with the contingency that I would only buy it to pair it with the vanilla creamer. This isn't something I'd necessarily wanna drink on its own. It's a little off-putting to have that like artificial vanilla flavor in there, but when having these added fats to it, it's very, very nice. I would also buy this medium and this dark roast again. I would have these as kind of your breakfast, morning coffee, something you're having a little bit of cream with. I think they work very, very nicely as that. The medium roast you can drink on its own. I think it tastes fine as a black coffee. The dark roast, maybe not so much. And again, the light roast just really had a very weak flavor profile, so we're just cutting that. So these are good with cream. This is good with vanilla creamer. And yes, I'm gonna go put those in the pile. We still have like two more categories to go and I'm feeling wired. It's not very soft, it's a very hard caramel, but it's good. Okay, I've got more water boiling off to the side. Now we have instant coffees. We have one instant coffee that is gonna be brewed hot. We have this very, very exciting instant coffee that also has cream and sugar already added and is portioned out into packets. And then we have instant cold brew. So let me get cups and then get started. Three different cups, three different drinks. So we're gonna use this one for our hot coffee. I'm gonna use this, this is a double walled glass cup. We're gonna use this for the instant coffee that is cream and sugar because I want you to be able to see the color that this coffee is gonna be. And then we're gonna use this along with some ice for our cold brew. Okay, Colombian coffee, no real information on what roast level this is at. Instruction wise, it says one heaping teaspoon per cup of very hot water. So I'm just gonna follow the directions. I think this is heaping. There's like something chemical-y about it. Like chlorine, like it's like swimming pool was my very first uh, instinct. Put that on the SCA flavor wheel. <laughs> it's a weak cup of coffee. I'll be just totally honest there. Sorry, I feel like my filter is just slipping a little bit at this point in the day. Okay. I want this to be good. I really, really, really do. This is so cute. I love the packaging. Very, very adorable. It comes with 10 packets. 
which is great. It says ideal for travel, which I love. So this is essentially a camping coffee. So one packet and then add four to six ounces of hot water, which is gonna be slightly less water than the instant coffee we just did. So let's get on to that. Ooh, it's very sweet. There's a lot of sugar in that. The milk powder is really nice because it balances out that acidity and really kind of like charred flavor you sometimes get out of instant coffees. Um, I will say it doesn't add a lot of texture to it. What I really like about creamers is that they make a fuller body to the coffee, of course, because you're adding so much fat and such a thick, like viscous fluid, it makes the coffee very, very creamy. You don't get that out of this, but you do get those softened flavors, which is very nice. This is a lot sweeter than I was expecting though. Hmm. I would buy this again. If you are going camping, if you are someone who likes coffee with sugar and cream, buy this. I think this would be a great purchase. Oh, and then finally, um, the instant cold brew. I have seen this everywhere. I've seen this all over TikTok. I've seen this on Instagram. I remember when Trader Joe's came out with this, everyone was over the moon for it. So I'm very, very curious. I've never tried this before. Now for this, we are supposed to add one heaping teaspoon of this instant coffee, and then we're supposed to add 12 ounces of cold water. That seems like it's heaping. I don't hate it. It's a little bit weaker than I would prefer my cold brew to be. Um, I'm assuming I could adjust that slightly by just adding more powder. I'm gonna try that. It's getting to the point of the day where my eyeballs just feel like they've been glued open. Honest, like, mm, I wanna sing its praises, but knowing what cold brew tastes like when you can do it correctly on your own, I, it's really hard for this to measure up. Um, this is a cool idea. I like the idea of making cold brew in 30 seconds instead of like 12 to 24 hours. In practice though, I, I, it doesn't taste like cold brew to me. That's just me. If you wanna use this as an iced coffee and add creamer to it, I'm sure you, it could pass as whatever you want it to be. Um, but I would not call this a good cold brew substitute. So this goes in the will buy again pile. These are going somewhere else. I have two different types of cold brew here. One is regular, one is concentrate. Very interested to see how they measure up against that instant cold brew we just had. I have three different types of canned coffee drinks. Two of them are cold brew, one of them is a latte. And then I have one nitro cold brew, which I'm very curious about. So. I'm just gonna get started with these cold brews back here. We'll work our way forward. This is that cold brew concentrate and the instructions are this. <laughs> I can't speak anymore. So this is the cold brew concentrate and the instructions on this drink is one parts con so this is the cold brew concentrate and the instructions on this are one part concentrate to two parts water. So I'm gonna measure by grams here to get the most accurate reading and we'll see how it tastes. Ah. I hate these tabs. Mm. That's a lot better. That is very, very smooth. I very much like that. Kind of a darker profile. I'm assuming this is one of their darker coffees, uh, but very, very smooth, very drinkable. Next off, we have ready to go cold brew coffee. Very, oh. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, that's nice. That is, again, very, very, very smooth. Um, immediately it screams milk chocolate. Um, there is a lot of sweetness to it. Um, I don't get a lot of that like acidity. Um, this concentrate was slightly more acidic, but it wasn't like acidic enough that it would stand out or make me not want to drink it. Oh, that's really good. Um, I like this. I like this a lot. Moving on, we have our single serve drinks. <coughs> First one we're gonna just go for is this coconut cream latte. This is a vegan dairy-free beverage. There is sugar in it, so it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be coconutty. Coconut already, at least for me, is very, very sweet. So we'll see. Maybe it's just that I'm not a huge fan of coconut milk or coconut cream in general. Not my favorite thing. Um, it is not an overpowering sweetness, which I can really appreciate. Uh, but yeah, not my favorite. Next up, we have two different cold brews. One of these is a regular original cold brew. The other one is cold brew coffee with French vanilla. You know how I feel about vanilla, so high hopes. 
This tastes like the same cold brew that we just tried a second ago, so same review. Now we have French vanilla. Okay, interestingly enough, this one does have some sort of milk added to it. This is not just straight cold brew. Mm, don't like that. There is a little bit of, what is this? Reduced fat milk added to it. I don't love that. If you're gonna add any sort of creamer to my coffee, I would prefer it to be full fat and just add a lot of really, really nice texture to it. Having a low fat milk in there just to kind of break up the bitterness or acidity doesn't do it for me. I'm so tired. Okay, so this says nitrogen infused with organic espresso. Do with that information as you will. So if I'm reading these instructions right, just pull the lid off and then just like aggressively pour. So Morgan spills coffee, here I come. I don't get any nitrogen out of it. Maybe I did it wrong. I don't know at this point. I don't have much more to say about it at this point. Not my favorite. Okay, so out of all of these pre-made drinks, as much as I wanted to like them all, I think the only one I'd really purchase again is this black cold brew coffee. It again has the same really, really nice, smooth, very drinkable qualities that the concentrate and then the regular cold brew had. I'm assuming they're the same ones, honestly. I really like it. If you wanna add cream to your cold brew, I would just buy this and then add cream to it. I would not go for this vanilla one that has low fat milk added to it because it just kind of like, I don't know, it doesn't really add anything except making it slightly milkier, but it doesn't add any like texture or richness or like really nice, like some of those like fat solubles that you'd get out of like a full fat creamer. I don't like coconut as I've said before, but if you like coconut, I feel like you might like this. It just really is a flavor that's not super appealing to me. So that's a personal thing. This one, Maybe I did it wrong, but I did not like it. So this is going in the would buy again pile. I think I did it. <laughs> okay, real quick before I go pass out and take a six hour nap, let's talk about the coffees that I would buy again because it's been a hot minute. Thank you for sticking it through with me and let's just review real fast because if anything, I've forgotten. So we have just spent a lot of time trying a lot of coffee and coffee related things. And I'm happy to report we came out with some winners. First thing we did, of course, was the whole bean coffee. And out of those, I very, very much liked this Colombian coffee, as well as their decaf. Honestly, if you're going by Trader Joe's, I would recommend picking up some of this. This is really nice to have around. Always good to have a decaf. And I really like this. Honestly, this would rival some of the specialty decafs I've tried in the past. Now for pre-ground coffee, I would say either go with their medium roast or their dark roast. I think these are coffees that pair incredibly well with cream. And if you want something that's really, really convenient, if pre-ground coffee is your jam, then I think you're going pretty safe with these. Now, if you are a flavored coffee person, which some of us are, you might actually really like their vanilla coffee. This is a very, very strange experience because the initial flavor and aromatics that will just punch you in the face are super, super sweet. However, this just has a very, very light vanilla flavor added to it. It's a little bit artificial, so I recommend adding cream, but overall, not a bad flavored coffee. Of course, we have vanilla creamer. This is delicious. This is exactly what you think it is. Go buy it. Instant coffee. I really, really like these. I'm gonna keep these and I will probably use them over the next couple of weeks because I think they're super, super fun. They're very convenient. And if you're going on travels or camping, as I said before, great purchase. Super sweet though, so keep that in mind. Oh, and I forgot the cold brew. I like these. I really like these cold brews. I think they're great. This one especially, which is the non-concentrate, this is the ready to drink, just straight out of the bottle cold brew, I think is really good. And it's probably one of my favorite cold brews I've had in the last couple of months. And going along with that, if you just want a single serving of it, check this out because this tastes, in my opinion, at least the exact same as this larger bottle is. And my guess, just knowing Trader Joe's, is that they're just repackaging in a single use can. So thank you all for being here today. I know this was a very long, laborious task, but I think we had some fun. I think we had some mishaps and I think we found some products that are actually pretty decent. Now, I'm going to go take a six hour nap and eat like eight tacos. That is my plan for the rest of the day. Now, I don't think you need to try this process yourself. In fact, that's why I did it. I think this is something, this is a video you can watch and then not repeat yourself. I don't recommend doing this. I think I should put probably a safety warning at the front of this video. Anyways, I'm gonna go take a nap. I am going to go eat food um, and clean up because uh, I have destroyed the kitchen. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for sticking around with me. I hope you learned something. I hope some of these products can be helpful in your life. 
and I will see you next week. In the meantime, if you wanna check out the coffee I released, head down to the link below. If you wanna follow me on any other platform, I upload on TikTok almost every single day and I'm on Instagram as well, both at Morgan Drinks Coffee. This was fun. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> okay, I lied. I'm gonna actually show you the mess that I made. Um, yes. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go sleep now. Goodbye, everyone.